We're going to dive into some photo editing today, and we're going to look at three tips that I use all the time, all the time, when it comes to editing photos. I will generally use at least a couple of these, but often all three of them. Every single time I go to edit a batch of photos, they are go-to techniques for me. Let's talk about it. This tutorial to use a... Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each year we eat on every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, let's dive into Lightroom. Now this will work actually, I'm saying let's dive into Lightroom. I'm going to be using Lightroom, just because it's what I've got available, all my photos are in there, I'm ready to go. But this will work in any photo editing software. You could absolutely do this in something like Capture One, for example. But let's just dive in. Let's start with this photo here. We're going to talk about the first tip, which is about simulating or amplifying, accentuating the sunlight. Now, first up, this is completely unedited, so let's do a very quick global edit. We're going to boost those shadows up a little bit, bring those highlights down, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of vibrance. We're not going to go too crazy with this because this isn't just how I edited this photo, which in fact, there is a video all about. So next, we're going to go into masking. We're going to click the masking tab just up here. That's going to open this up. And the first thing we're going to do, I think, is just darken this foreground. Let's bring a linear gradient in like this, and we're just going to bring the exposure down. The next thing we're going to do, and this is the first tip or the first technique I want to talk about. Let's create a new mask, again, linear gradient. Let's bring this in from the right. Now, what we're going to do with this is actually bump this exposure up a little bit, not too much, and then come down to dehaze and add negative dehaze. Now, I love doing this. I hardly ever use dehaze in the way it's intended to actually remove haze, but I use it so much all the time in photos with a negative dehaze. And what that's gonna do essentially is almost add a little bit of a haze. And if I turn this mask on and off, so off and on, you can see what it's doing is, is almost creating a, a soft sunlight kind of look to things. And it's a great way of accentuating or amplifying if you have directional light in your photo. So obviously in this photo, you can see the sun is over to the right, the sort of top right. So we've added in this mask. If you press O, you can see the mask coming in from the top right. And with some negative dehaze and a little bit of a bump with exposure, we can really make this feel like there's sunlight pouring in. Now, some photos, you might want to go a little bit further with it. Some photos, you don't want to go too far with it. You might even want to add a little bit of warmth in there as well. You can actually see it on a photo like this as well. We've got very nice directional light coming in from the right. So if we were to draw a nice linear gradient in, this photo, I've actually already added it at one point. But look at that. Just bring the exposure up and then the dehaze down. Let's not go too crazy. Otherwise, it's going to start looking a bit overexposed. But look at that. Look at that. If I go before and then after, we're just, we're brightening it, right? We're just brightening that, but with the directionality, I don't know if that's a word, of the sun from the right. And that negative dehaze really adds that, just softens it a little bit. You could even bring the contrast down a little bit as well, because that sunlight would do that, right? It would just slightly soften everything up in that way. We can actually come back to this photo though and talk about the second technique, which is all about intersecting different masks. This is so useful and it's something I didn't even realize was in Lightroom until maybe a year ago, but it's such a useful feature. So let's have a look at this. Now, what I would do next, I would create a new mask. I would go select subject and I would just bring the exposure up a little bit just to, just to bring our dog here, just nice and the, the focal point of the image and nice and sort of bright and visible, lovely. But what if I want to make this a little bit more stylistic, right? Let's go linear gradient. Let's bring this down from the sky, something like this. We want to darken that sky, right? Let's bring that down. Let's bring the saturation down as well. Let's make this a very sort of stylized photo like that. But the problem, of course, is that it's darkened our subject. It's darkened my dog Nala. And we don't want that. We want her to be bright. So we don't want this mask to be affecting her. Now, there's a couple of ways we could fix that. We could very painfully go and subtract from mask and say brush, for example, and we could just actually brush this in. And actually, that's not too bad, but you can see I've, I've just gone over there. I could, I could fix that. It's not the end of the world, right? But I don't want to do that. I'm going to actually click on mask for here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say intersect mask with and then select subject. Now, initially, what that's going to do is only apply that gradient mask to where the subject is. But if we just untick invert here, it's now only applying that gradient mask in the areas where our subject is not. And if you press O, you can see we've still got that linear gradient coming down across the sky, but it's now no longer interacting with our subject. So we've sort of masked 
our mask, which is fantastic. And it really, really helps because I can now go in, I can make further adjustments, but I'm not affecting our subject there at all. I could, I mean, I could really, I could really overdo it if I wanted to and do something like this. I think that's pretty cool. I think that looks good, but you can see how this would be very helpful, especially something like a, a city skyline. If you wanted to darken that sky a little bit or anything like that, where you have things overlapping. Intersect mask is just such a hugely important tool. Something I use all the time. Oh, big, really big. So we've used two techniques on this photo. We're going to dive into another photo here. Well, let's go to this one. This photo, interestingly, was actually taken on a Canon 550D. So not an expensive or new camera. And it's nothing special to look at, right? But that's because of, I think, the way the light is interacting with the scene. And we can fix that. And this is something we actually talked about in a previous tutorial very recently, might even have been last week, where we focused the light in editing to bring the photo to life and bring it to where we saw it at the time. Because the camera doesn't always capture exactly what you see at the time or what you feel. So let's do that here. We can do a very quick kind of global edit. Let's bring the highlights down because they're really overexposed here. Let's bring the shadows up a little bit, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity, a little bit of vibrance. I'm going to warm it a little bit as well. And then to make this a lot easier and quicker and something I actually like to do with Lightroom sometimes, I'm going to come over to the built-in presets. They're all just over on the left here. There's loads of them to be honest with you. I'm going to come to Style Cinematic 2 and I'm just going to mouse over some of them. And you can see as I mouse over them, they're changing. I like the look of CN15. So I guess that's Cinematic 15. Let's click that. We can adjust the amount that it's kind of being applied, the intensity, I suppose, of it. But I like it. I think it looks good. There's a couple of things we need to do to fix this, though. I want the, the viewer's eye to be pulled into the middle of the photo right here. But right now, we've got this hugely distracting bright area at the bottom. Now we could crop that out. But actually, I'm just going to draw a linear gradient mask up from the bottom and actually just reduce the exposure like that. Bring the highlights down a little bit and reduce the exposure. Next, I'm going to go for a radial gradient. I'm going to pop that right over the middle here. I'm going to make sure that's nice and, and reasonably big. I'm going to invert it so that we're actually selecting everything outside of that circle. It's nice and feathered as well at 50%. I might even bring that feather up a little bit and then make it a little bit bigger, something like that. And then I'm going to bring the exposure down just, to, just enough. Let's go for another radial gradient. Make that nice and big as well. This time we're going to be affecting this area. We're going to bring the exposure up a little bit. We're going to do our old trick with the negative dehaze. We're going to bring that down a little bit. I'm actually going to warm this up just a touch as well. Look at that. Things are really starting to change. Things are really starting to, things are starting to happen around here. We could even go ahead and add our other trick in. Let's go a linear gradient. Let's bring this in from the top right, which I think is roughly where the sun probably was. Let's bring the exposure up a little bit. Let's bring the dehaze down. So a bit of negative dehaze. We've got a nice kind of sunlight feel. Look at this. Let's go before and after, which you can do with the backslash key. This is before. This is where we started. Very distracting in the foreground. Dark. We've got a bit of a problem with the light. This is where we ended up. Look at that. We're pulling the viewer's eye right into that, into that kind of pathway, down that pathway. We've got people at the end of it. That was where we were. This is where we are. And I'll be honest with you. I'm very happy with this photo. We've still got some problem areas. This is still overexposed. This fence kind of is, is, is massively, it's very overexposed. Like I say, reasonably old, reasonably cheap camera. I think the whole setup that I was using was under 200 pounds. So I'm pretty impressed of what we've been able to actually get from it, which is really nice. But that is a technique I use all of the time, trying to guide the viewer's eye to where I want it to be, trying to recreate how the photo looked when I was there taking the photo as opposed to how it sometimes looks, especially in RAW, straight from the camera, which is, of course, this. This is much more what it looked like when I was standing there, looking down this path, thinking, yes, that's a lovely composition. I like that a lot. So we've got negative dehaze, allowing you to create a kind of sunlight feel and really amplify that. We've got the intersecting mask feature, which is huge, especially if you have overlapping areas. But to be honest, that's something I use all the time as well. It's such a useful feature to actually be able to mask your masks. And then I'm borrowing a technique that we talked about last week where we're really focusing the lights in one area, really drawing the viewer to where we want them to be looking in the photo, drawing them in and actually recreating the scene as we saw it. I love making these kinds of videos because I love messing around with Lightroom, messing around with Capture One, Photoshop, whatever it might be, and finding new ways to bring photos to life. So if there's anything in particular you'd love us to cover on a Tutorial Tuesday, whether it's photo editing or whether it's something practical as well, I'd love to know. 
down in the comments. Let me tell you, Tuesday comes around quick and I gotta think of something every week. <laughs> so if there's something specific, I would love, I would love to make the stuff you guys wanna see. So let me know down in the comments. Let me know as well if you use any of these techniques already, if you use them in a slightly different way, that's super interesting. That's really interesting. I get to learn something from you as well, which I love. You can check out a full list of all the kit that we use for these photos and this video, of course, down in the description. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.